Ananda Lewis, the beloved former MTV VJ and talk show host, recently shared a deeply personal and emotional update on her ongoing struggle with cancer. In a candid conversation with CNN's Stephanie Elam and anchor Sarah Sidner, Lewis reflected on her decision to go against her doctor's advice after being diagnosed with breast cancer in 2020. What began as stage three breast cancer has now metastasized, spreading to other parts of her body and progressing to stage IV. Lewis, 51 years old, spoke with raw honesty during the discussion, describing her initial approach to her diagnosis and her regrets about not following through with the medical treatment recommended by her doctors, specifically the suggestion of a double mastectomy. My plan at first was to get out excessive toxins in my body, she recalled, her voice tinged with a quiet sorrow. I felt like my body is intelligent. I know that to be true. Our bodies are brilliantly made. Her belief in the body's natural ability to heal was part of the reason she resisted conventional treatment early on. In her 2020 Instagram announcement, she admitted that she had avoided mammograms for years due to a fear of radiation exposure, a choice she now reflects on with regret. Looking back on that, I go, you know what? Maybe I should have, Lewis said during the round table, her voice heavy with the weight of hindsight. In that same discussion, Lewis explained her decision to keep her tumor, hoping to approach healing holistically rather than undergoing aggressive surgery. I decided to keep my tumor and try to work it out of my body a different way, she revealed, her tone filled with a mixture of sadness and reflection. She had hoped that by eliminating toxins and embracing natural healing methods, her body would respond and rid itself of the cancer. However, the reality has been far more painful. Despite her best efforts, the cancer has continued to spread, metastasizing to other parts of her body, a devastating development that makes her diagnosis now stage I4, an advanced and incurable stage of the disease. Her emotional confession during the interview suggests the deep, inner conflict she feels, caught between wanting to believe in her body's strength and now confronting the sobering consequences of her decisions. Lewis's vulnerability in expressing these regrets is both heartbreaking and relatable. Maybe I should have listened to the doctors, Maybe I should have made a different decision, she admitted quietly, the regret palpable in her words. I thought I had this. Her story is one that resonates with many people who have faced difficult medical choices, those moments when fear, uncertainty, and personal beliefs collide, making it hard to determine the best course of action. In Lewis's case, the fear of radiation exposure from mammograms had kept her from pursuing early detection for years. By the time she was diagnosed in 2020, the cancer was already stage three. Reflecting on her experience, Lewis has expressed that she never took her health lightly. She believed in her body's ability to heal and wanted to avoid what she felt were invasive or toxic treatments. But as the cancer progressed, she slowly began to realize that her original plan wasn't working the way she'd hoped. I thought I could beat this on my own terms, she shared but now I'm learning that sometimes we have to surrender, even when it feels like a defeat. Her admission is not only a personal one, but also serves as a warning for others who might avoid early screenings or underestimate the importance of following medical advice. Lewis's battle with cancer has become a painful reminder of how fear and misinformation can shape critical healthcare decisions. She acknowledges now that her decision to delay mammograms out of concern for radiation exposure likely allowed the cancer to progress further before it was caught. I thought I was protecting myself, but instead, I may have hurt myself, she confessed, her words brimming with regret. Her story also highlights the importance of early detection and the difficult choices many women face after receiving a cancer diagnosis. Sarah Sidner, who joined Lewis in the roundtable conversation, shared that she too was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer earlier this year. Together, the two women reflected on the fear, confusion, and uncertainty that comes with trying to navigate life-changing health decisions, decisions that often feel overwhelming Lewis's and impossible cancer to is get now right. stage four, she has not given up the fight. Her words reveal a woman grappling with the weight of her decisions while still holding on to hope for the future. I don't know what's next, but I'm still here and I'm still fighting, she said during the interview. Her journey is a difficult one, but it's also a testament to her resilience and strength, even in the face of regret and uncertainty. While she acknowledges the what ifs that now haunt her, she is determined to move forward with whatever time she has left. I don't know how much time I have, but I'm going to live it the best I can, she said, her voice steady despite the pain. Lewis's story is not just a tale of personal struggle, 
but also a call to action, a reminder for women to prioritize their health, embrace early screenings, and trust in the guidance of medical professionals. As she continues to face her cancer journey head on, her honesty about her choices and regrets serves as a powerful message about the importance of balancing hope with practicality. A heartfelt plea for awareness, the former talk show host now hopes that by sharing her story, she can encourage others to take action before it's too late. Whether it's going for a routine mammogram, asking questions about treatment options, or being open to medical advice, Lewis wants other women to learn from her experience. I don't want anyone else to have to say, maybe I should have, she said softly, her voice filled with a mix of sorrow and determination. If my story can help even one person make a different choice, then it was worth telling. Her words carry the weight of a life forever altered by choices made in fear and faith. But they also reflect a woman who, despite everything, refuses to give up. One who continues to search for meaning, healing, and peace in the face of unimaginable challenges. Dot, however, comma, hope gave way to heartbreak when Lewis discovered that the cancer had spread, transforming her diagnosis into stage I re metastatic breast cancer, a grim reality she hadn't expected. In the interview, Elam explained in a somber voiceover that while Lewis had experienced some improvement, everything shifted last year when her lymphatic system flared up. This moment marked a terrifying turning point for Lewis. It was the first time I ever had a conversation with death, she confessed quietly, her voice tinged with sadness and exhaustion, because I felt like this is how it is. Lying in bed, overwhelmed by the pain and fatigue that cancer brings, Lewis could feel the nearness of death creeping into her life. Her words paint a heartbreaking picture of someone grappling with the inevitability of loss, her own loss. I was just like, fudge, man. I really thought I had this, she admitted, her frustration palpable. I was frustrated. I was a little angry at myself and I said, man, listen, I know you're coming for me at some point, but I don't want it to be now. And if you could just wait, I promise when you do come, I'm gonna make it fun for you. These words spoken with a sad but dark humor reflect both her weariness and resilience. They reveal the complexity of her emotions, how she wrestled with anger, regret, and acceptance, all while trying to find a way to hold on to hope. For Lewis, this wasn't just an emotional struggle, it was deeply physical too. I literally had that conversation laying in my bed. I couldn't get out of bed for like eight weeks, she recalled. It was a time when her body refused to cooperate, leaving her trapped in the confines of her own thoughts, forced to confront the fragility of her existence. The image of Lewis, once vibrant, full of life, and adored by fans, confined to her bed for months, unable to move, is a heartbreaking one. It underscores just how relentless and unforgiving cancer can be, even for those who try to meet it with strength and optimism. In the interview, Lewis reflected on one of the most significant and controversial decisions she made during her cancer journey, the choice not to undergo a double mastectomy. After receiving her diagnosis in 2020, her doctors had recommended the procedure as a way to improve her chances of survival, but Lewis, valuing her sense of self and what life meant to her, chose a different path. My quality of life was very important to me, she explained. I want to want to be here, so I had to do it a certain way for me. Her words are filled with quiet defiance, proof that, even in the face of illness, she refused to live on anyone else's terms. For Lewis, it wasn't just about fighting the cancer. It was about finding a way to live fully and authentically in the process. But now, with her cancer having advanced, it's clear that the choices she made, while deeply personal, come with their own burdens of regret and reflection. During the roundtable, Sarah Sidner, the 51-year-old CNN anchor who was diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer earlier this year, with shared how has her been own. transformative. Unlike Lewis, Sidner chose to undergo a double mastectomy in May, opting for the most aggressive treatment to give herself the best chance at survival. Sidner's words, however, reveal a similar desire to find meaning and joy in the midst of her battle. I want to be here. I want to thrive in a way I have never felt before, she said, her voice filled with both determination and vulnerability. The contrast between Sidner's decision to undergo the double mastectomy and Lewis's choice to forego the surgery is striking. Both women made decisions that felt right for them at the time, but their stories reflect the complex and deeply personal nature of navigating cancer. There is no easy answer, 
only the hope that each person can find a path that allows them to live with peace, however that may look. Lewis's journey has been anything but straightforward. Her decision to avoid the double mastectomy, while rooted in a desire to preserve her quality of life, now weighs heavily on her as she faces the reality of stage four cancer. Yet even in the midst of regret, she remains steadfast in her belief that life is about more than just surviving. It's about wanting to be here. I wanna wanna be here, she emphasized, her words echoing with both longing and resignation. It's a sentiment that encapsulates the emotional struggle of so many cancer patients. Those moments when the fight to live becomes as much about the heart and soul as it is about the body. In a heartfelt Instagram post, Stephanie Ellum reflected on the emotional weight of the conversation she had shared with Ananda Lewis and Sarah Sidner. For Elam, the discussion was far more than just another interview. It was a profoundly vulnerable moment, a window into the real struggles and difficult choices that these two women had faced in their battles with cancer. As she wrote, I'm forever grateful for their willingness to have this conversation with me, to fully open up for the world. Her words carry a bittersweet undertone, acknowledging both the importance of the conversation and the painful truths it brought to light. Elam expressed deep gratitude that both Lewis and Sidner were willing to lay their souls bare, sharing their personal experiences, regrets, and fears in front of an audience. It wasn't easy for either of them, but they knew that speaking their truth could change someone else's fate, perhaps even save a life. Yet beneath Elam's appreciation lies the heartache that comes with knowing how precarious life can be for those facing a cancer diagnosis. This was no ordinary conversation. It was a plea for awareness, a call to action, and a powerful reminder that time is not guaranteed. If we can get just one woman to get her mammogram because of this conversation, that's success, Elam continued. But even this hopeful statement feels heavy as it hints at the harsh reality that early detection can mean the difference between life and death. There's an unspoken sadness in her words, a recognition that too many lives have already been lost because the conversation didn't happen soon enough. For Lewis, who had long avoided mammograms due to a fear of radiation, the decision to share her story came with its own burden of regret. It was a way to warn others not to make the same mistake, a painful reflection on what could have been different if she had taken a different path. Her words were filled with sorrow and acceptance, knowing that sharing her journey now might come too late to save herself, but could potentially save someone else. Sidner, too, had her own emotional battle to convey. As someone who had chosen a more aggressive treatment, including a double mastectomy, her message was one of determined survival. Yet even in her triumph, there was the bittersweet knowledge that no one should have to face such harrowing choices. No one should have to fight this hard to stay alive. Elam's post was more than just an expression of gratitude. It was a plea wrapped in sadness, a wish for a different reality where conversations like these wouldn't need to happen. But as it stands, they are crucial. I want everyone to live long, healthy lives, she wrote, her words filled with both hope and an underlying ache. She knows that not every story will have a happy ending, but if their conversation can prevent just one tragedy, if one life can be saved by early detection, then the pain of sharing these difficult moments will not have been in vain. The weight of Elam's words lingers, a blend of sorrow and hope of what has been lost and what might still be saved. For those who watched the interview or read her post, it serves as a poignant reminder to listen to your body, get the necessary screenings, and fight for your health. It's a small but powerful message from women who understand, more than anyone, just how fragile Ellen's life is that be. this conversation will inspire others to take action. There is also the quiet sadness of knowing that even the most open and honest discussions can't undo the pain and loss already experienced. In the end, Elam's post is not just about cancer. It's about the importance of cherishing life while you can. It's a call to love, to act, and to hold on tightly to the moments that matter, because tomorrow is never promised. And in her gratitude lies the heartbreaking truth that, for many, the fight is ongoing. But the conversation at least has begun.